Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity, where we are oh. on our way to the end. Also, as a note, severe burn, we might want to go back and do some resting. Actually. Where'd the other shade go? Oh, somebody leveled Hi. up. Why did you level up? Oh, discovered the burial grounds. Got it. Okay. Um, hmm. Seven points. Oh, yeah. Increase your lore. Won't really help, but okay. Hmm. That's going to be a petrifying glad. That's a freezing. It's a faux AoE. Faux AoE. That turns you to into a uh, fighter. That's tensors. That's basically tensors tr uh, transformation. Oh, that's weird. That's somewhat nice. Okay. I'm actually going to pick up the Nina Goth's freezing pillar. Now. Hmm. Two per rest. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay. Indeed. Oh dear, I did not mean for him to do that. Okay. Oh, look, it's a lurker, too. Okay. Will o wisp. Fifty percent, fifty nine percent, eighty six percent. There we go. No, no, you're using the wrong weapon, that's why. Okay, um... Have another. That didn't work. Oh, hello, Banshee. What? Touch it with that.
Let's try out this new thing. Oh, she's down. Just a nap. That's a colorful comment. Okay, we need a camp. Minor fatigue. We're going to lose the celestial blessing, which is unfortunate. Oh. You know what? I kind of want to go back to the to the stronghold. Let me Certainly. investigate around a little bit. Copper panned. No war paint. I know where it comes from. Just the two. Might plus three. Already have it. Okay. Racers of all consuming rage. don't have any... Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm raiding the, the, the dead. Oh dear, people staked up. My resolve is only 17 right now. Let's clear this area out before we... Ooh. Actually, no. There, that first. You are using that. Where are you? There you are. That might not work very well. Hmm. How bad? Is there more than one of those? There indeed are two of them. Okay, um...
No. Yes. A little bit more. Got to get that power thing. Do the two stones again? No. Let's just sh hit them. You're not collecting much, I see. Okay, I forgot you had that thing that does that. There we go. go. No surprise. You're paralyzed. Everybody's paralyzed. Yes. Guess what? We're resting again because that was painful. Uh, yeah, that hurts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quick save. Also, my timer is apparently no longer running, so I'm going to check to see how long this has been going. See you in a moment. Oh, uh, well, it's been running. It was about 14 minutes, so I'm going to run it for another 10, which is going to be a little bit longer. Margaret's fire casts light in dark places. But that's fine. Quick saving again, just because I can read it says quick save there, but eh. Certainly. So, when I've got this area cleared, I can go up here. These are the souls. When I've got this area clear, I'm going to go head back. I want to be as strong as possible. Another turn, Inquisitor. They will signal some unseen attendant standing beside a large crank. I ask 
ask again. Yovara Extensius, do you confess to these heresies of which you stand accused? He waits, but Evora, Yovara only stares straight ahead, her face stony, the creak of her restraint is the only sound. Do you confess to apostasy? I confess to renouncing a mistake. Strands of thin spittle spanning from one lip to the other like the spider's threads. Do you confess to conspiracy against the one true faith? I confess to opening minds. Do you confess to false prophecy? I confess to following a false prophet. Indeed. And where might we find this heretic? You? He wears the robes of a grand inquisitor. You have no followers here, heretic. Your lies hold no sway in the court of the penitents. Holy my truth, then. Yavara seems to look directly at you. Another turn! <laughs> no! Wait! Wait! I'm ready! I'm ready! You are ready to give a confession? I'm ready to hear one from you. Gathering up what little strength she has left to speak. Theos shakes his head and points at the Inquisitor. The scraping grind of rusted gears echoes in your mind as the apparitions fade away. Well, we know where that went. If this doesn't inspire faith in the gods, I don't know what will. Okay, so we need to leap into the pit. The party gained... Shouldn't you have leveled? A little bit off. Of course. Oh. Okay. Locked passage. Let's go to... Am I in fast mode? I am in fast mode. That might explain a lot of things. Don't know why I bothered to pick that up. Okay, we are going to go... I'm going to go to Old Song. Now, do I want to rest at the temple here where I have a lot of bonuses, but only for one rest? Or do I want to be able to do four rests? Because I think I'm going to need the four rests. Some creatures and armor types are especially resistant or vulnerable to specific damage types, as we've seen a lot of times when my weapons do nothing. Consider the creature's damage reduction on their tooltip and the bestiary to decide what weapons and spells will work best on them, as I have not been doing the entire game. Okay. There we go. Rose, but I think the elves were responsible for the cold aura. Okay. I think we want Cade Noir. Yes. And I think... We want, when targeting an attack, the percentage listed next to the potential targets indicates your chance of scoring a hit or crit. If the chance is low, consider attacking a different defense or using afflictions to increase your odds. Especially if you have a rogue in the party, or are a rogue, because their sneak attack gets triggered by certain afflictions. Okay... Having a high lore is useful. Oh, hello. I'm going to. I'm going to. I have. A, I'm a fighter. See, but you know what? 
My lore is obscenely high, so I'm going to now read this scroll at you and hit you with a rainstorm of apocalyptic proportions. I can't do apocalyptic. I don't go quite that high level. Only up to six level, so not quite apocalyptic. Maybe sub-apocalyptic? Well, definitely sub-apocalyptic. Anything that's not apocalyptic is either sub-apocalyptic or super apocalyptic. It has to be one or the other, because sub is under and super is over. Hmm. So sub is not really a precise uh, definition. Wow, it's taking a long time to load up the, uh, the fort. I suppose I should go look into the guy in the basement, talk to him. I suppose I should look at the ingredients that are in my... Not as beautiful as the Anguithin ruins near my home, but your fortress is impressive in its own little way. But instead, I think I'm just going to rest for the plus three resolve. Learn of grieving mother's past. Discover the importance of the disturbing dream. You find yourself back in the space inside grieving mother's mind. It is familiar this time. Even though you feel you have seen the countless birds from this vantage point, something fills you with unease. I had not intended this. The sky was darkened and the mist has risen from the forest to hem you in. You are trapped. You hear something. The sound is strange, dissonant, like warping metal. You grit your teeth against the noise, and yet, as it rises, the eerie melody drives the numbness from your limbs and clears a space in the mist. Focus on the chimes. The noise resolves itself into a dull tone. As it resounds through your bones, you see that your hands are in motion, and once again you are drawing forth life, something warm and fragile, struggling into the world. The scene feels familiar, a moment you have lived and dreamed a thousand times before, yet something ominous gnaws at the edges. Focus on the child. As your hands move, you hear the sounds of chimes clear and sharp, yet somewhere distant they seem echoed by something else. Wails of sorrow, toiling bells? It's impossible to tell. An inexplicable sense of dread fills your soul as this child makes its journey to you. Push by push, a malicious presence seems to surround you, and you lean forward to shield the child. At last the baby emerges, wet and ruddy from its journey. A lifetime seems to have passed as the newborn moved from womb to world, and another seems to pass as you cradle the trembling child, waiting. The child cries out, its cry full of life, full of soul, the chime echoing in its thoughts, filling it with its welcome. The soul is blurred at the edges as if you are viewing a soul from within a soul, but it is there, it is alive. The woman before you is weeping, and her first cry, her hands reach out for it and surrender the child. As you surrender the child to her, something you have done many times before, and as your hands move, the dull clangor sounds, and you feel a weight hanging from your wrist. You look down and see bones, tiny and malformed, hanging from a string about your wrist. They're heavier than they should be, and as they clank together, they make a noise like funeral bells. The mother is too intent upon her newborn to pay you any heed, and so you hide your wrist behind your back. She need never know, can't ever know. As you hide the bone chimes, you shiver in relief with the premonition as the chill wind that suddenly sweeps the plateau. And because we had a thing with... A grieving mother, Exil, levels up, and my timer was about to go off, so give me a moment. I had not actually tended to trigger it then. I thought you had to rest in the wild, not with the. not with like a tavern or something, but see you in a moment.